Now here again is Fleming Rutledge. Fleming, thank you for sharing that provocative and uh, challenging message with us. It's a I, pleasure. Well, I thought we'd perhaps start with the, your, your differentiation between a, a judgmental God and a loving God. Uh, I found that fascinating because growing up, I, I had a very uh, strong relationship with my grandmother who, uh, who shared with me in her Catholic upbringing how she felt the church had come a ways in opening itself up in more of a loving way than more of a judgmental way, and that that was intriguing and a sign of growth to her. It, it, what, what do you feel about that in terms of... Well, undoubtedly she had had an experience of church in which the judgment of God had out overbalanced the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Today we tend to hear almost exclusively about the love and mercy of God mm -hmm. and very little about his judgment, at least in the white churches. And, um, or if, unless we are fighting a war in which God is cast in the role of judging our enemies, which is dangerous because then we think that God is not judging us, but only our enemies. But your grandmother undoubtedly, and isn't it wonderful, never underestimate the role of a grandmother. That's right. <laughs> um, being a grandmother. Um, your grandmother had experienced something very important. She had recognized that an overemphasis on God as a judge who is frightening and who is watching every single thing you do and grading you and, and counting up your sins and your mistakes and your faults. That is a terrible way for people to hear the gospel. Isn't that kind of the Jonathan Edwards sinners in the hands of an angry God uh, motif? But let, let me ask you, you say in your message, Fleming, uh, that to be outraged on behalf of the and the vulnerable, the oppressed, the defenseless, yes. is to do the work of God. Yes. I want to know what makes your blood boil these days. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the, what makes my blood boil? It, it, the, the fact that we have secret prisons. The fact that we have, that, that we are not offering habeas corpus to those whom we deem beyond our standards. The fact that the American government I don't think I'm almost incoherent. The, the fact that the American government is doing these things is inconceivable to many. We never thought we would live to see a time when America would torture prisoners. And the whole idea of making a distinction between those who are worthy to be called prisoners of war and those who are not worthy to be called prisoners of war has led us into the position of imprisoning for years at times people who are clearly not guilty but who have had no opportunity to prove that they are not guilty. I have a number of friends whose blood is boiling about this. And so The Crucifixion, your next book that you're working on, uh, connecting the, the crucifixion with today's culture, say more about that and how it speaks to injustice. Well. In the cruc it's a very strange thing because the crucifixion is the last thing we would think of as a, the center of a religious idea, a crucified God, a person who is publicly tortured to death. In this way, Jesus has put himself in the place of those who are tortured to death without regard to whether they are guilty or not. Jesus himself was utterly innocent. And therefore, he stands in the place of those who torture the innocent. And therefore, he is not only representing victims, but also perpetrators. This is the thing about Christianity that is so different. The distinction between Victims and perpetrators is broken down in Christ. And that's why it's so important from a Christian point of view for us not to make ultimate distinctions between our enemies and our friends. 
we don't have a lot of time left, but I wanted you to speak a little bit about uh, forgiveness. You, you positioned that very interestingly, too. It isn't easy, but it's absolutely necessary, isn't it, for us to practice that and to do the work that's required to... It is the unique Christian characteristic. Mm -hmm. But I just want to emphasize, obviously, that it is not easy, that it sometimes takes years, and that it must be combined with this passion that things should be made right. It should not be papered over. The injustice, the crime, the wickedness, the suffering should never be papered over. There should never be this sort of forgive and forget, let's put this behind us. And as you, very dangerous. And as you say, it should never be discussed without, uh, apart from justice. Do I mean Absolutely. Thank you so much. And now